Hello again, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today's class is Introduction to DNS. So we are going to go over the basic concepts for domain name services today so that you understand how they work in the networking environment. Now this is the Introduction to DNS class, so we today we are going to be talking about DNS within a normal network environment. We are not going to get into some of the more complicated internet DNS stuff, so we're not going to be talking about MX records or C names or any of that. We're just going to be talking about DNS so that you guys have a basic concept uh, of DNS for when you're doing networking. Now what is DNS? DNS is the server service that maps domain names to IP addresses. Now, as I've talked about uh, before, remember many of the things that we humans find easy, uh, computers find completely useless. So for computers, when computers are trying to gain access to something on the, net, the local network or the internet, they do that by using an IP address. Now, we as humans, it's very hard for us to remember IP addresses, you know, 192.168.1.5, 208.55.66.4. That's very difficult for us to remember. So we use domain names, computer names, host names, such as server or cnn.com. Well, the thing is, your computer can't use cnn.com. If you go to your web browser and you type in cnn.com, that doesn't do a whole lot for the computer. That is not what the computer needs in order for you to go to the website cnn.com. What the computer needs is the IP address for the server that houses CNN.com. Once it has the IP address, then it can route your browser to that IP address, then it can grab the website, and then it can display it for you. The same thing goes with if you're trying to connect to a file share. If you're trying to connect to the shared drive on a computer named server, server doesn't mean much to the computer. The computer needs to know the IP address. Once it knows the IP address, then it will send you to that IP address, which has a folder named share, and then you can access the shared files. Well, DNS, Domain Name Services, is what maps those domain names to the IP addresses. So if we did not have DNS in the world, we would have to remember all those horrible IP addresses and it would make life basically impossible. So when we're talking about DNS, this is what we're talking about. Again, when I, t when I talk to you guys, since you guys are new, many of you guys are new in technology, especially if you're taking an introduction to DNS class, one of the biggest problems for new people is that they think services do more than they do and so they then get confused. It's very important to understand that DNS is only one of the services that you use on a modern TCP IP network and all it does is map domain names to IP addresses. So DHCP the dynamic host control protocol, that is what dynamically assigns IP addresses to computers when they connect to the network. That is a completely different service than DNS, and that can be housed on different servers. Now, many times DNS and DHCP are housed on the exact same server, so again, a lot of people get confused and they think that they are the same service, when in reality, they are completely different services. Now, when you're going to be working with DNS, frankly, most of you guys, most of you guys, when you were working with DNS in a network environment, are probably going to be dealing with your, your, your standard small office, home office router. So DNS and DHCP and a whole bunch of other things are usually built in to these small, uh, small business routers. So most of you guys, when you're dealing with DNS, this is what you will be dealing with. Now, these things... There's generally not a lot you can do with it. Basically, you can turn DNS on, you might be able to map a couple of domain names, but, but that's about it. They're very simple, obviously, you spend 100 bucks on one of them, you, you turn it on, you plug it in, you're done. DNS either works or it doesn't, you throw this away and you buy another one. Once you get into the enterprise environment, you will generally be dealing with 
uh, one of two different uh, types of DNS servers. You will either be dealing with Microsoft DNS, so I'm currently doing a, a track of Windows Server 2012 where we're going to be doing a class on DNS, setting that up in Microsoft Server World. So if you're in the enterprise world, you will most likely either be dealing with Microsoft DNS servers or you will be dealing with Unix Linux bind servers. So if you want to learn more about DNS, you want to learn about the really hyper, hyper complicated stuff, take a look for bind, B-I-N-D. So with those, if you're using Microsoft DNS or you're using bind, you can do really, 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 really complicated things. But for most of you guys with DNS, it's, it's pretty simple stuff. All that it's going to be doing is it's going to be mapping the, the domain names to the IP addresses. Now, one of the important things, uh, one of the reasons that I brought up that DHCP is different than DNS is because many people get confused about this. They put DNS on one server, they put DHCP on another server, and then their network doesn't seem to be working right. Well, the important thing to remember is remember DHCP dynamically gives IP addresses. DNS houses the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the domain name to IP address. It, it maps that, right? Well, in order for a modern network to work properly, you need to have something called dynamic DNS set up. So when you're dealing with one of these small business, uh, small business routers, if you're dealing with a network that's set up properly, when the DHCP server gives an IP address to a client computer, it's actually doing two things. One, it's giving the IP address to the client computer. Two, it's telling the DNS server what the IP address of that client computer is. So dynamic DNS is DHCP dynamically writing to the DNS tables to say to, to map those host names or those domain names to IP addresses. So if you have a DHCP server off in its own little world and it's not talking to the DNS server, the DHCP server will continuously give out IP addresses but that information will not be recorded on the DNS server. So if you try to ping, let's say PC2 or Computer2, right, and dynamic DNS hasn't been set up, that won't be able to work because within the DNS server, that information has not been written. So this is just something that you, you should keep in mind. This is one of the big problems people get into, especially when they try to get into Microsoft Enterprise networking type stuff, is that they don't have this dynamic DNS configured properly, and so they're giving out IP addresses, but the host names are not getting mapped to the IP addresses with, with in DNS and then when computers try to talk to each other or communicate with each other it all turns into a big mess. So the first thing that you need to remember with DNS is this dynamic DNS. It dynamically writes the host names and IP address into the DNS tables. The other thing uh, that, that you may not think about, but, but you will hear about more when you go into the more complicated stuff with DNS, is one of the things is called reverse DNS. So DNS, the primary thing that DNS does, is DNS maps that host name to the IP address. Now, as we've talked about in the hacking class, what's really cool is if you can set up a server or you can set up a system in the middle of a network to start redirecting computers, to a different server. So, so I did a class uh, where you, you hacked your host's file, and in that, you could actually have google.com go to a malicious server, go to a server that is not actually Google servers. It's your own server, and then you can download viruses or whatever. So that is done because you are able to get in and redirect that computer to a, a fake IP address. Well, one of the reasons that can happen is because in the normal DNS scheme, you map the domain name to the IP address, but you don't verify that the IP address is the IP address that it should be. So what you can have, especially in Microsoft World and in Bind World, is you can have something called reverse DNS. So DNS maps the host name to the IP address. In reverse DNS, it maps the IP address to the domain name. 
So if your computer is supposed to go to, let's say, server in an enterprise environment, when you're gone about to go to server, it will, it will go to the DNS and will make sure that server is supposed to go to 192.168.1.10, but then it will also do a query and it'll say, what is 192.168.1.10 supposed to be? And if you have reversed DNS setup, it will say 192.168.1.10 is supposed to be server. That way you make sure that the host name maps to the IP address and the IP address maps to the host name and then you get more security. So these are some of the basic concepts that you should know with DNS. I want, I want to show you a couple of things just to, just to make sure you guys understand what's going on. We're going to go to the whiteboard so I can explain this a little more. Um, let me transition. So basically, as I say, when you, when you have your little computer, so your computer is here and it is obviously connected to your switch. Now when your computer wants to go to a website such as CNN.com, again, your computer doesn't understand what CNN.com is. That makes absolutely no sense to it. So what it's going to do is it's going to go out and within your computer, a DNS server will have been configured. So it might say that 192.168.1.1 is the DNS server that's been configured for this computer. So it will go to that IP address, 192.168.1.1, and it will say, hey, I want to go to CNN.com. This DNS server will then return and it will say, well, CNN.com is 208.55.66.4. Your computer will then take this IP address and it will go out to the router, it will go out to the internet, and then it will look for 208.55.66.4 and that will take it to CNN.com and then CNN.com will return the web page. So this is basically how DNS is going to work for you. Now it gets a little bit more complicated in this when we're going out to the internet. So when we're going out to the internet, again with the DNS server, the important thing to remember about the DNS server is a DNS server is generally, if, it, if it's the local, the LAN DNS server, it's only going to have records for the local area network. So your DNS server that is sitting in your building only has the records for the computers that are in your building. It does not have the records for all of the computers, all of the websites out on the internet. So what's really going to be happening is when you want to go to CNN.com, you're going to go through the switch that will go to your local DNS server that's connected to the router which is connected to the internet. In your local DNS server, your DNS server will also have DNS server information. So it will have its own records, but then if it can't find the, the, uh, the host named IP address mapping in its records, it will also have DNS that it should look for if it can't find the information in its own records. So it'll have its own records, but then it'll also say, let's say 209.77.22.1 is its primary DNS server, and 210.67.22.2 is its secondary DNS server. So if you're trying to go to CNN.com, it's going to go through the switch, it's going to go to the DNS server. Your DNS server is going to look for CNN.com within its own records. Well, when it looks, it's not going to find that information. So then it's going to see what its primary DNS server is, and it's going to go out to the internet or wherever that DNS server is located, and then ask that DNS server what the IP address of CNN.com should be. If the outside DNS server has the information, it will return the IP address to the DNS server, which will then return it to your computer, which will be like 208.77.22.3, and then now you will be able to go out to CNN.com using that IP address. So this is something that's very important to understand, is on your local area network, not only does your DNS server have tables that have the host name to IP address is there, but it will also have its own DNS servers that it will go query if there is no information within its table. So this is what happens. Now when you're on the local network and you have your computer and it's connected to the switch 
and then you have the DNS server here. Basically, if you ask for something like, I need to go to computer named server, that will go up to the DNS server. You'll say, I need the information for server. DNS will go, oh, server equals uh, 192.168.1.2. It will return that IP address. Your computer will then go to 192.168.1.2 through the local switch and then be able to connect to any of the shared resources there. So this is basically how the DNS works uh, in the real world. Uh, th this is not overly complicated stuff, but it is what you should understand. So the DNS servers map the host name or fully qualified domain name to IP addresses. Remember that the DNS tables, you want them to be dynamic. You want them to update whenever DHCP gives out an IP address because if it does not dynamically update, that means you have to go in and manually edit the DNS tables all the time, basically. Reverse DNS is something you get into, basically once you get into the more complicated stuff that maps IP addresses to domain names. Why this is done is for security, to make sure that you're not getting redirected off to some place that you shouldn't be. Now the big thing, again, with these DNS servers, is not only, not only do they have their own tables full of information within them, but you also program DNS servers for DNS servers. So within your router, this will have its own DNS configuration, but then if it cannot find uh, the domain name to IP address within its own tables, it will then look to the DNS servers that have been configured for it to see if they have the, the proper information. Again, uh, we talk about things like security and hacking. One of the big issues here is if you can get into the tables for one of these DNS servers and you can modify the tables, well then you, you can redirect computers willy-nilly however you wish and start causing a lot of problems. So if you have a DNS server on your local area network and somebody nefariously is able to get in and rewrite some of those tables so that so google.com no longer goes to Google servers but it's redirected to some other person's server, the, the important thing to realize is that there's really no additional security. Basically, the computers will all get rerouted because all that happens within this DNS process is your computer says, I want to go to CNN or I want to go to Google.com. The, the router, the DNS server returns, well, Google.com is 208.66.55.4. Well, somebody can go in and instead of sending it to that IP address, it sends it to to, to 220.77.8.2, eh, there's not a lot of security in there. But that gets into some hacking and some security and, and some other stuff, but, but we're not going to get into that now. I just wanted to give you an overall introduction to DNS so you, that you guys understand what's going on. Again, we're going to have more classes. We're going to have a class on actually setting up DNS server in the Windows world. We're going to have a class on internet DNS. So again, uh, mapping all this information. When you're dealing with the internet, you have things called MX records, C, C name records, A records, things like that. But that will be in a different class. I just wanted to give you an overview here so that I can teach those additional classes. So, uh, as you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy. This was Introduction to DNS. As always, I enjoy teaching this class and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.